and welcome to the 16th Discworld novel, Soul Music. <sighs> if you are a fan or just just know anything about rock history or the history of music on Round World, you're gonna love this. You're gonna absolutely love this book. This book is all about the day the music died or didn't. <laughs> This is another death book, and this definitely ties in with Mort. Um, ties up loose ends that we were left a little questioning. I, if you've been watching my videos, you will know that I never tap these books. I put it in the tap here. <sighs> this book. The Musical Puns. And this is... How, how do you put this? This is one of those books that I didn't quite get the first time I read it because this came out in 1994 um, and I probably read it somewhere between 98 and I want to say like 2002 maybe somewhere around that time um, because in 98 I was well, you know, 94, I was 8 years old and I didn't really start reading English until I was 11 years old, I want to say. Um, so yeah, I was a kid the first time, so I didn't quite grasp half of the musicians, music, events that uh, inspire this book. Until basically now, because now I've learned a little bit more about all of that. I've learned about Buddy Holly, I've learned about the Beatles, who doesn't know about the Beatles? Um, the various bands whose counterparts are featured here. Well, n names. Good lord, I'm getting ahead of myself, but the puns that he pulls on the band names is just this man was a pun master. So what is this book about? Well, it's about death and his granddaughter Susan, because she's a Susan, of course. Um, it's about death still, still growing as a character and his, well, the fact that he can't forget. His sense of duty is weighing heavily on him and um, He's just at that point in, well, not life, but in existence where he, he kind of needs, yeah, he's, 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 he's really a little bit lost again. So kind of like with in Mort, um, when death steps, takes a vacation, in a manner of speaking, a member of the family needs to step in. And his granddaughter Susan, being his only relative, is the one who is pushed into this role. Um, I, I'm not quite sure if she's 16 or 17. I think she's 17. And she's, you know, your rather typical teenager. When you're at that age, you feel that you're, uh, you know a lot more than you maybe do. You feel like you're more clever than you probably are. And uh, the bad part is that um, she does have some family traits and talents, such as the ability to make herself unseen when she doesn't want to be seen, so um, she can get on with reading and not let education get in her way. <sighs> I like Susan. Particularly when, in, especially, especially in later books. I love her here, but when she's a little bit older, she's one of the the better character. She's like, she's up there with Granny. But the rough thread throughout this is the music. Um, like a lot of other things, such as the um, phenomenon of the moving pictures, um, this music isn't quite right for the disc world. When uh, the music is set free here, it has effects that um, the disc world cannot quite handle. And oh boy, the effects that it has. This is rock music on a disc world. Just, just rock and roll on a disc world. I'm just loving it. The main character here, 
Oh dear, I said main character. There, mm. the plot centers around this young druid. I believe he's around like eighteen, whose name is Im. What is your name, dear? Imp E. Celine. He is from Lamadeus, which is a very musical country and is also a very druidic country, and. He isn't much of a druid, much to the displeasure of his family and particularly his father, there was a falling out. And because Imp is a musician, he is a musician by heart. Uh, so he, uh, he, he, he goes to Morpur, because of course he does, and there is a guild for musicians, because of course there is, and the guild of musicians doesn't really do a lot for musicians, because of course they don't. But there he does meet his two band members. There is Lias the Troll, who later renames himself Cliff, and Claude Clotson, the Dwarf. Because the Dwarfs are uh, patronymic, like we are here in Iceland. And of course, they wander into this magical shop. You know the type. The, you, you know the ones. The ones that appear out of the blue and have always been there. They haven't been there. They weren't there yesterday, but today they have always been there. I love those, I love those shops. They pop up from time to time. And I really like the proprietor of this shop. It's a musical sh shop because that's what the plot needs. And I really like her. She's an old lady. She knits. And she can pack her pants. I love her. I would like to read a book about her, but um, you know, that's how it goes. And in this, this shop, they pick up the guitar. And then the guitar basically starts to take over. Because you know how sometimes musicians have talked about how the music just overtakes them? And Imp Iselin changes his name. But basically he translates his translates his name from Lamadian Lamadosian? Lamadian. I'm gonna say Lamadian, that sounds more over to Ankh Morpartian um, because his name means Bud of the Holy his name is Buddy Holly it's, it's Buddy Holly he often gets called said uh, people say about him that he looks rather Elvis he looks like an elf he's rather Elvis Elvis. And you know, that's, that's, you know, that's how it goes. And running with the th story thread or the plotline with the band, um, they do have a fourth member for a while, and that's the librarian. I love how often the librarian is a crucial player in this book. It's just, I love it. The librarian, however, is I mean, he is clever. The music does get a hold of him, but he he does have the sense to get out in time, which is good because and this this tab here that I put in that I never put in these books is because of a certain part. Now, when death disappears because he wants to forget, because that's I mean. If there's anyone who I understand in these books, that would be death, because, whew, good lord. Being one thing and being around another thing and then trying to find yourself in that other thing, it just it must be absolutely horrendous for an immortal. It's just, just a me. But I tapped something on page 83. And this is a part where Susan has been picked up by the Death of Rats, who plays who is also a big player in this. I just love it. We also get the raven. And I love him. Because he's a raven. And so the Death of Wrath and Binky, Death's horse, go and pick up Susan. Because the role must be filled. So the horse and the rat go and pick up the girl. <laughs> and in Death's domain, she of course meets Albert. Who is Death's manservant. And she, where do I... Want to. So Albert is has basically just met Susan. How old are you? Sixteen. Oh my. Albert rolled his eyes. How long have you been sixteen? Since I was fifteen, of course. Are you stupid? 
And I tagged this because of two points. First off, in this domain, time doesn't really flow like it does in the real world. Time stops there because it's this domain that doesn't have time. There's just, it's in time, it's outside of the time, uh, which is kind of why Albert is there. But I also tagged it because I do understand that there are younger readers, ones who have, who were, who, who, who do not know a world before the Twilight series. Now, I myself have never, I was never able to read the Twilight series. I tried because everyone else was reading them and they were having fun and I wanted in on the fun, but I just could not, could not with Bella, just no. But I do know about this rather famous scene of Bella asking Edward about how old he is, he is and how long he has been that age. That kind of reminded me of that. I'm like, I want to talk about that. So moving on. Susan, well, I'm not sure if she has a cross on Buddy the first time she sees him, or if it's because she has she has this connection with her grandfather's memory, and she knows that Buddy is important. So there might I kind of feel like there's a little bit of clash between uh, a cross and uh, and just knowing something that you don't know that you know. Because this memory goes both backwards and forwards. He, he remembers things that haven't happened yet. And that might be something that might be, or, or is, rather, um, having an effect on Susan. I know. I love this story. It's just, when you are reading it, it's just, just everything with the history of music. We get soul, we get rock and roll. There's a reference to rap because music is just leading through every single mind that can pick it up, and 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 there. But the one, the ones who pick up on that particular um, style of music are dwarves. So instead of rap music, the dwarf calls it rat music, and I'm like, only took me how many years to get that reference? <laughs> But yeah, there are so many things, but also there's... Okay, so... Because there's also this family tragedy of Susan's family, because Mort and Isabella died in a very tragic um, accident. That is something that Death is also having to deal with, because they were his family, no matter how... The poor guy... <laughs> But they had made the decision that they wanted to be mortal. They didn't want to be immortal. And that is something that I very much understand. That is something that Susan starts to understand when she, she has to go through this entire thing. So, I mean, there is this tragedy of the Stohelid family, but... It's also really sweet. The relationship that forms between Death and Susan is just... It is awkward, but it's also really, really sweet. And dear God, this... Yes, that is the Discworld version of a motorbike. But of course, it isn't a motorbike. It's the idea of a motorbike. And, oh Lord, the effect that is this music has on everyone on a Discworld. Um, the riots, the spreading of this music to people, the effects that it has on the Dean, the wishes of the university, and the Dean in particular, is like... Mm. Like they are playing... Tara Prasid wrote the Dean, a 70-something-year-old man, entering this mindset of a rebellious teenage son to the Archangel of and the Dean is like eight months older than Arjun Chiller. <laughs> but the, it's, the, it's the image of the end scene. Oh. Actually, I think... So back in the day, on our family's home computer, we found artwork. You know how the internet was back in the day? It was... No one... If we wanted to do something on the internet, no one was allowed to make a phone call because there was just one phone line and we needed to use them. And one of the things that I definitely went tracking down on the internet was 
images from the disc world of the disc world and uh, the one thing that made me really happy was buying this book it is Paul Kidby oh you know Terry Pratchett the art of this world Paul Kidby this is the uh, what do they call it the monarch it's nanny it's nanny here we have death um a little bit blurry because there is one particular image that i was so happy to see was in here um because i had it in my computer or the home computer and i had it printed out when i was a teenager well, actually here's here is a sketch that he made of susan in this book um, I do recall that Terry Pratchett had to complain that um, Paul Kippy really made um, like Shamlin Wimes look too cool, look too handsome. Here's the family. It's really cool. And ah, here we go. So here are the sketches of death on the motorbike. Really cool. And here. Look at it. Look at it. That is death stopping the music. I was trying to make certain things happen. But of course. The thing about this music is that it is the music from the beginning of existence. So death is not time yet, but death does teach the music a little bit of a lesson. With the... What do you call it? The... The empty chord. Death plays the empty chord to stop music. In order to restart it, the musician restarts it. It's like, it's cool. I love it the how things tie from the beginning to the end how things weave in brilliant i love it see so yeah, i think that should be enough rumbling from me about soul music it's just i'm so happy to finally understand the references like hmm. finally being able to understand the whom the who thing about the rolling stones the grateful death which is grateful death let balloon, let zeppelin. I'm just so happy. But what also makes me happy is that the next book in this series is Interesting Times, which I feel like I should have been reading in 2020, honestly. Interesting Times being a belief, Chinese proverb, or a curse, where you tell someone, may you live in interesting times. And I did not get that reference or how that was a curse until 2020. I think we all get it now. I'm like, I never want to live in interesting times again. But yeah, that will be the next one. But the good thing about that one is that that is a Rhinesmith novel. We get our friend Rhinesmith back. So we are saying goodbye to death. Well, on to the next novel anyway. Death is everywhere. But we are saying goodbye to Susan for the time being. And uh, I will catch you later. Hopefully in the next video. Okay? Take care. Bless, bless.